Hello and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to somewhat conclude what is new here at Zim, zimjs.com. And we have all of the new things in Zim016 where you can press on the big banner here and that will get there. Also in the About page, uh, there's more to it there, plus they're strewn throughout the site. So in Zim016 here, we've taken a look at the shaders, the emitter tool, the config tool, the normalize, this is speech, and we just did a bubbling on the threshold effects uh, there. Now what we're going to do, believe it or not, is do the rest of them all in this bubbling. That's the hope. <laughs> all right, so the rest of them are pretty straightforward. Each of them just involve kind of one thing. And let's have a look. Here's the label words like that. And so we've broken up some text into the words. And there we are animating those words using a sequence. Um, so let's see, why don't we take a quick peek at each one and so you know what's in store for us. Here's the sound where we're animating up the sound, animating down the sound, so that's uh, a fade that's there. Then we have the indicator, which is using a display object, in this case a label to use that's an indicator. Usually we don't make that interactive. I mean, we might, uh, but we'll talk more about that as we get there. That's already been made. We had an indicator around, or we've had an indicator around for some time, but now we can use any display object. Here is some 3JS showing us how we're act activating what is called object control on each of those objects, rather than, oh, hey, I'm missing my, um, my logo back on that. I think I took that out as I was testing, uh, but we'll get that back. And then here's a new circle with the percent that, uh, that uh, has been around for a while, circle of percent. And then we are putting adding a percent arc to that. So we'll see how that works. So it's a parameter. We have a shortcut to our Google fonts now. We can just put GF underscore and then the font name. So we'll see that in action in the code. We're going to go into the code of all these and momentarily. And we have a slider. And this slider has a range that can give uh, various values. So we can get the min and the max from that. We can also find out the average and the amount. We're animating the slider as well are those features. Okay, so back in we go. Here's our code. We're going to start with the label words right here. We're using Zim016. Don't worry about this make icon thing. That just brings us that icon. Here's label words. And here are the, the long words that we've put in there for the label. Label words is much like label letters. It's going to divide these up into words, though. And we are caching them at the start so that as we animate them... Oh, yeah, it's, it's easier to... It's better to animate text if you cache it. Otherwise, you sort of get this sort of weird updating effect. It's not the end of the world, but since it's since it's animating, you can't really tell the blur or uh, you know the the uh, little edges. Caching slightly blurs the edges as it dithers there. Uh, it's crisper as vector, but if you're animating, you don't notice. And also, animating will help uh, with the cache. Will help with uh, speed as well or performance, especially if you have animating a lot of text or emitting a bunch of whole bunch of text particles etc so we've put the cache to true on that and uh, note that will cache each item in there because we've broken that up into whatever is we can't just cache the whole thing because if we cache the whole thing that would then be the container cached and we wouldn't see anything moving inside now that is if you're moving if you're not moving you could have cached the whole thing but if you're not doing something with these uh, with these words, then why bother turning them into words in the first place? So here we are doing something with these words. We do have a background that is a series, and that's what adds uh, a different color to each one of those. And then otherwise, pretty well the same. So label words is actually extends a wrapper. So it's a wrapper 
and that's what allows these words to nicely wrap. Let me see. Let's go back to the label words there. So that's in a wrapper. We can center it. We can do various alignments and spacing tricks. Anything a wrapper can do, we can do with these. And that, that is quite cool. We can reverse the order of the words uh, in a variety of different ways uh, and alignments and internal alignments, external alignments. It's basically the wrapper is as flexible as a, um, as a flex box, for instance. So if we go out to Zim here and go under examples, the wrapper is featured at the end of our feature examples. Oh, sorry, I'm a, <coughs> a wheeze. And here's various settings of alignments and so forth in different ways that we can turn things into columns and uh, even add voids to it. So there's a central void. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with with um, a wrapper, okay? And each of these would be a word, and we can uh, you can treat the alignment just like that as well. Okay, back to our features here. So I think we're oh well, I'll show the the label words is animating. So there's animate, and we're animating the scale with a sequence of point one and a looping and rewinding, and that's what gives us that animate effect. So that's not new, that's been around for a while. Let's move over to sound then. So sound next is how do we, for a while, uh, we've had sound obviously, but we've never really had a way that we can animate the volume. What you would have to do is um, make an object with a volume and then animate the object with animate the object and set the volume and then in the animate, uh, call animate, we would say, now set the volume to whatever the volume object that we're animating is, <laughs> which is a few steps. So we've internalized that, those same steps that I just said into the sound here, and we no longer have to worry about that. We have a toggle when we change. Uh, first of all, how this is working is you're not allowed to play a sound until you interact. So right now there's no sound, but when I interact, it creates a sound. From now on, we don't want to keep on creating the sound every time we interact. So uh, what we do is a little trick where we, in the toggle, we say, hey, if there's no sound yet, then make our sound. And we store that sound, a referent, our, our variable is outside the toggle. So once we put an audio into that sound, then we do have a sound. So the next time we come in, it won't run this at all. So in other words, the very first time it makes our audio and plays it. Otherwise, uh, we're just toggling it. So that only runs first time. Next time when, when we toggle, it's either going to fade up the sound. So sound.fade up or sound.fade to zero. And this is the time. So you can specify a time there. By default, it's two seconds. So we're doing the default two seconds when we fade in but we're fading out a little bit more quickly. There is also a pan, but we didn't, we couldn't just use pan. We can't say sound.pan because pan happens to be an existing property of the sound instance. So when we play something, we end up getting a create.js sound instance in here, and that's what we can operate on. Um, and that means that we make the audio once, but every time we play it, we get a different instance of that audio that allows for multiple audios of the same MP3 to be going or whatever, uh, wave or whatever, to be going at the same time. And we can control the volume and check out when they end and, and whatever. There's ways to prevent that from happening too. So if I kept on play, 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 I can say how many times I am allowed to play the same sound. But anyway, that's normal Zim stuff on sound. This is the new thing, sound.fade. I was saying, though, that we, can, we don't have sound.pan, which will animate the panning, because pan is an existing property, unfortunately, where fade is not a property. So uh, we called it pan sound, or no, pan odd, pan, pan sound, I think it is. So there is a pan sound, which allows you to animate the panning or the left and right channel of of the of the sound. We thought about making this fade sound, and then we would have been consistent. Fade sound. 
but it just seemed kind of petty. We hardly ever pan and will fade a lot. I would imagine almost every time you bring in a sound, well, not every time, but certainly maybe a backing sound or where you, you, you pause your sound, it's nice to fade it out. So that'll be quite common. And we, we left that the, the nice and easy fade. And I'm sorry that the other one is pan sound. <laughs> okay, this is fade. And the other one is pan sound. And rather than fade sound and pan sound. But I think, uh, well, anyway, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. That is sound for you. And let's see. The next one is the indicator. So let's go peek at the indicator in this, oh, multi-feature bubbling. Wow. So here is the indicator. That's the same as always. And we pop on over to the indicator. So there's a new indicator. But our indicator type, instead of being the traditional, which if I put null here and we have a look at, what would that traditional one be? Some dots. Okay, so we have dots as our traditional indicator. You remember those? And we also then said, hey, you can make that a star, I think. And I hope it's a star. Yeah, there's stars as an indicator. So we added a couple things like that. And we also allowed you to in, in, do emojis. Uh, and then we had the request. Thanks, Carl, for the request saying, could we just make it anything? <laughs> and we went, oh, I guess we could make it anything. So now it's any display object can be put in here. Uh, we have happened to put in a label, but that could be a pick as well. Oops, I didn't save it. So save that up. Now we put in a label there with the letter Z, but it could have been the letter S. And then you get a bunch of S. Or it may not have been a letter at all or a, a, a label that could be, well, we already have rectangle ones. I think that's in there. What other things? Do we, I mean, we could have an indicator of buttons if we wanted to, an indicator of dials. But that would be, you would probably use more like a tile for that if you wanted that. The indicator is also, in, it can be colored, so anything that's got a color as well will follow the colors of this, like a label has a color. So the label follows the foreground color and the background color. See that? Nice, huh? All right, so that's about enough of that one. I'm sure you'll figure it out. It's pretty straightforward. And next we have the object controls. So moving over to object controls. I can't remember where we were here. Here's the object controls, the ones that are missing this guy right here. And that's like so, it's in 3JS. <clears throat> Object controls, what happened to, oh, I remember, yeah, there's the make icon. I think I was experimenting with some object controls and I must have commented out the make icon down wherever, there it is, that I did. And uh, re update that, so there it goes to the server and we have our icon back again, great. All right, so what are the object controls? Uh, we don't need to go through all of the 3JS stuff, but it's a label. Here's the 3JS stuff right there. This is very traditional, very traditional, as traditional as possible. 3JS, render camera, scene. Our geometry is a, one of those cubes, a rectangle. We're adding the mesh to the stage. Now we've got an objects control right there. Object controls. We pass in this stuff. You would do this all the time. Here are some settings on it. Um, hopefully I put in the place. Yeah, there's the place on GitHub. So that's where it came from. Thank you very much, Albert. Alberto, sorry, Pyrus. Uh, and you can go there and find out some more information about what's going on there out at the GitHub. And we've just brought that in to Zim's 3JS, along with um, a bunch of other controls as well that are all in there. If we pop on out to here and scroll to the CDN, there's the CDN and R, we're on R156, here's the, the, the shim. So this shows you, we brought in orbit controls from this place, first person controls, pointer lock controls as an alternative to first person controls, a GLTF loader, uh, object controls is right there, a VR button. 
and then we're uh, passing on those things through. They're not very big. These things are just, you know, like not too big, 100 lines of code at most sort of thing. Uh, maybe some are bigger, but in general, some are smaller. Okay, so we're bringing those in automatically when we ask for three, so we're welcome then to use them. And that's what we're doing here with the new object controls. So you'll have to look up what those settings are. Tell you the truth, I didn't even bother looking at them really. I, I, I kind of get what they're doing. I can't spin this too much around vertically, um, but I can more horizontally. And maybe one is the speed as to how much it's moving every time I drag it. But that was fine for me. All right, we did do something a little bit fancy here, and that is we use a raycaster to find out which one we're controlling because you have to tell it which one you want to control. And we wanted it so that when I pressed on one, I control that one. And in the examples, that wasn't in the examples, so we had to add the raycaster stuff to be able to handle that. That's why this all looks pretty complicated. But in the end, whichever one we press on, if it's mesh, then we add the the object controls to the mesh. If it's mesh two, then we add the object controls to mesh two. Otherwise, we set the object controls to not um, to not move, because otherwise it's sort of odd to be moving over here and it's moving this thing. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So you can look at that example to figure out how to do that too, if you need to. We did have a touch of an issue bringing that into mobile. I think it had to do with this DOM render ad event listener. That should probably be a pointer down if we're on mobile. We don't have to worry about that. I forgot. We don't have to worry about that in Sim because all that's handled in CreateJS. The pointer and multi-touch and stuff is all abstracted for us. But if you're going out to the add event listener, you might want to use pointer events there. And then it was um, probably good from there or something like that anyway. But for now, for mobile, we just made it up. We only made one of them and we made it operate uh, that one. Okay, that's object controls. A couple more. Can we do it? Huh, huh, huh. How are we doing? We're 15 minutes or so. I think we can make it. And uh, I think they're getting easier as we go. <laughs> I hope object controls wasn't easy. These guys look pretty good. The range might be a little, little more, but this one's pretty easy. We open on the circle and there it is right there. That's what the code's going to say. It's going to say, hey, we made a new circle. Set the percent to 60 and then change the percent arc. Maybe we can play with the percent arc a little bit. That's in here. It may not be exactly, uh, uh, oh, here's animating it. We could animate it. So let's bring that back and we'll open up in a default browser here. And there's the percent arc animating. <laughs> Cool. Do you like that? And so we're animating it from 30 or minus 30 where it is to 30. So just beware that doesn't look like what you expect. Maybe minus 30. I would have thought 30 would be poking out this way. It's not quite how it works. I don't know if it's if we work. Yeah, it doesn't. There is no uh, total right way here to work it. But um, how we did it is as follows and we'll just stop that from animating for the second take a look at that so if if we didn't add the percent arc it would be a line going straight down here like that if we take the percent arc out like so and try it then we get this okay and we've rotated the circle so perhaps we can unrotate the circle up. And we'll have to bring those back in just a bit. This is what it looks like normally. It draws a circle and chops off a percentage. So that's 60% 60, 60 of the circle is here. 40% is missing. If we said 50%, it would cut in half. If we said 10%, it would be only a, like a sliver up here at the top. So that's been around in Zim for a while. It's kind of handy. But then we wanted to make a moon once and thought, oh, it's not easy to make a moon. Maybe we'll have to do that for you. So we did a little bit of coding and let's bring back the percent arc, but I'm going to comment out the rot comment out the rotation there and bring it back. Now we have the, I didn't rotate it. And so now we've got this percent arc here. 
And how we did that is you can see that there's another circle here like this, and we're using winding to remove that circle from the previous shape. So this is all in a shape. And so we've removed that, cut it out basically. And where we've removed it is a radius about, I don't know, I guess this edge would continue down like to here. And then we've gone, that's the radius. So the, it's not necessarily right in the middle there. The radius is somewhere like this. I wish I could show you my sketches. <laughs> Um, but anyway, the radius is, or the center is, say, right where my cursor is, and then it will go to here. That is 0%. Uh, so if we put another circle with a radius right here, that's 0. And it ends up cutting in. Let's see where 0 cuts in. 0 cuts in like this. Boop. Okay, so if we doesn't quite look like it though, does it? But it would be here. Uh, and it's drawing a circle. That looks bigger than the zero that I was thinking. Was maybe I got it wrong. Uh, I, think, I think that was right. It's supposed to be putting a circle right here on the edge. If we go minus 30, it would be basically 30% this way. That's where the radius of the cutting circle goes. If we go positive 30, it's 30% the other way out here, and you end up with a smaller little amount there. So if we went minus, or sorry, 30, then it goes out farther, up, 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 out farther. But when it does, the circle gets bigger, and it cuts it at less of an angle, in a sense. So now we're down here somewhere, and it becomes a bigger circle. The circle has to go through these two points. So I don't think you're ever going to get a circle, no matter how far you go, you're never going to get a circle that is flat, because that would be an infinite circle. So that's not what this is used for. It's not to make a bump going out the other way. Eh, anyway, it's uh, for a bump cutting in. What does higher, oh, then you run into other problems. So if you go in further, um, like negative, if you say negative 60, you run into a winding problem or something like, oh, that worked out all right. Negative 60 is good still. What about negative 80? I'm starting to see it right there. You see this thing? If the circle cuts in, it also depends. Negative 60 worked out all right because we had a percent of 60. So if we had more of it, uh, so 80% of the circle there, and we cut into it more, oh yeah, then you get this helmet effect. So what happens is the winding doesn't seem to wind properly. As, as we try and cut this circle into the other circle, if it goes past that, it doesn't cut anymore. That's just, I guess, how the winding works. So who knows? Maybe you want a headphone. A headphone look. That's that's handy, isn't it? Nice. We could even go further and get a headphone. Let's go to 90 and get the headphone effect. But you're not going to get a really slender crescent moon effect. I like those headphones, though. <laughs> Am I ever messing this up for claw clamps? Better undo all this. So that's experiments in... Um, the percent arc there. And we're back to our nice moon. Really, you just want to make moons. I know it. <laughs> there we go. That's a fine moon. <laughs> All right. Moving along fonts. And let's take a look here. We go back and fonts are right here. We have introduced a shortcut for Google fonts. And that's handy. So here it is, we're loading a bunch of Google fonts and instead of going out to the full uh, sort of path of Google fonts, we keep on shortening this, shortening and shortening and shortening. And now we're finally to here where you put in GF underscore in front and we'll know that that's a Google font. That's Roboto, Anton, Dancing Script. Note, you're okay with that. You're also okay with a plus sign there, but not like that. Okay, so if you have a space in your Google font, you can leave a space in here, or you can use the plus sign. But down below, when we're down below here, beep, 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 specifying the text, we have not 
accommodated the plus sign in here. Maybe next next version of Zim, that will be our big change. We'll say, it's okay to put the plus sign in there. <laughs> Look, announcing, ladies and gentlemen. You can put the plus sign in the Google font. Ah, oh, Zim017. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, there. Uh, don't put the plus sign in there. Leave those spaces. I would have rather there be no spaces, but so be it. That's Google for you. They said, okay, spaces is all right. Eh, no, but no whatever. Okay, so there we are using the fonts. Also take a look at the tile. New is the padding there that we've added. In the past, in other versions, we had no on our tile. We're styling our tile. We had no background padding. So we were stuck, if we were to do this, uh, we were stuck with the following. Did I save that? I think I did. I'm not local there, so let me right click and open in default browser. We were stuck with, there's no padding. And we couldn't get this, the background color is not very apparent at the moment. Let me <laughs> change the background color. Something a bit more exciting, red. There we go. Here's the background color on that tile. So each cell gets a background color, but you can see that that's not gonna be very helpful for us. We want a way to add some padding in there. Uh, and we didn't have that way in the past, but now we do background. Oh, there is the background padding zero. We can set it to 20, for instance, and we get this. Okay, so that's nice. Remember that there's also a backdrop that we added just recently, and the backdrop also has padding, so we can add another level of um, backing there, and that's the spacing, horizontal, vertical in there. So we're all pretty good now with respect to putting that stuff in a tile. We don't want red. I'm gonna undo that and bring back other thing. I think we're good there. Good. Ooh, slipped an extra one in there. Extra bubbling. The background padding for a tile. Uh, we don't do a background margarine. Margarine. <laughs> Definitely don't do a background margarine. Margin is based on the, um, let's see, the spacing. Okay, so that's your spacing is your margin. This is the padding around that. And then your objects themselves can have padding. If the, so that's the padding on the label itself. Next and last, finally, we have the range sliders. Okay, so this is on a normal slider, but we have a couple extra parameters that give us this range. So there's a min, this one's recording the min of zero and there's a max of 10, but if we bring it down here to five, oh, no, oh, 5.8, five, we have a min and max of five, that gives us an average of 2.5, and the amount is five in between them. We can also drag that, so it's still keeping the amount of five, but changing the range. And then we've got one of these things, it's animating like that, and the other one is animating each one individually. Those are wiggles. So if we come into the code here for the range, you can have a look at how all that was done. It's a little bit too abstracted for me to look through right now. Let me just show you the, uh, maybe we should have done a simpler version. <laughs> what do you think? Anyway, there's the slider. We've got range true, and there we are setting a current value on it. Here's range true range max and range average. Oh, interesting. So we can specify a range average and, and do it that way. And then we're wiggling the range average. That's cool. I wonder what happens if we set the min and max and then the average as well, which one it would take, because we can't have all those operating, but you can find out and do some experimenting. So there we are wiggling the range average. These ones were wiggling the current value of A. So that's the sliders range slider A, range slider B properties. So you see that we've got, uh, oh, hang on, range slider A. What are we looking, what are these things? Mm, not sure, let's start at the beginning. So we're styling some stuff. We're setting some labels around. 
There's a slider with range true. So this is our just our default slider right there. That's S0. And we're using the labels for that. What's the difference between T0 labels? Got some, there's the labels, just so you remind you. Oh, right. Yeah, we have little title labels, and then we have labels for the values. Okay, so T probably stands for the titles. And then our other ones, these labels label L0, L1, L3, or L0, 1, 3, and 4. What happened to 2? Uh, I think that matches these things, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And, uh, right, 0, 1, 2 doesn't get one of these boxes. 3 and 4 do, so that's why we've kept the numbering consistent with those ones. <laughs> little puzzle, huh? Here's our tile. When we change, we're putting, we're changing the text to be decimal versions of those values. So you get a range min property, a range max property, range average, and a range amount. Hey, that's nice and straightforward. Decimals just um, shorten that to one decimal each. <clears throat> you could probably, aside from change, you could probably, what's the other word? Uh, bi not bind, um, wire. Uh, that up if you wanted to. But we were trying to figure out what range slider A and range slider B. Oh, right, yeah. Range slider A is this button. That's the button itself. Range slider B is this button. So we've got A and B for the range slider button. Okay, normally it's just button. And uh, a slider only has one button and it would be button, but this is the range slider button A, range slider button B. And so we're wiggling the current value of those between these amounts. All right, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, that concludes the label words, the sound a fade animating in, the indicator, the object controls, the indicator with any display object, the circle with the percent arc that cuts in there. That only works if you have percent set. And then the shortcut scripts for, or not scripts, um, fonts for Google Fonts, GF underscore, and our range that we just looked at. Uh, please go check out the other bubblings. We did a bubbling on each one of these, plus an overall bubbling on the site changes. Uh, for instance, what we have here in the banner. And other other locations and the updates yeah we went through the updates in the docs and took you through any of the minor updates so have a look at those bubblings i am dr abstract here at zim and we look forward to hearing from you on the forums We're, we've got a new forum coming that will be another bubbling coming up soon and Come on and visit us at zimjs.com slash slack. That's the one that's being replaced, though. And zimjs.com slash discord, which will hang around. We'll see you back there shortly. Have fun coding creativity. Cheers. <laughs>